Uh, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Many here, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to good old Austria. We're back in town. We're back in the country. We made it, as you might have uh, known. I was down in Leonidio in Greece for a couple of months now, actually three months, I think pretty much exactly three months. And we had a great time there, man, it was um, nice, lots of sea, lots of sun, lots of rocks even, despite all the, you know, the big thing which hit the world in the meantime. And we're also quite lucky, I have to to thank and praise the climbing gods for that, because actually we, uh, we crossed the border on our trip to Greece just in time to be uh, there before the borders were closed. And even now when we got back, we went through... I think Bulgaria, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, and then Austria. And all these countries were really no problem to, to travel through. So yeah, that was amazing. Um, I want to thank the climbing gods for, for blessing our journey like this. It was really amazing. And even despite all the, the, you know, the big thing that hit the, that hit the world, um, we were able to get some climbing in, right? And as you guys know, I am kind of a data freak. I'm a bit of an analysis freak, so... And I like to make these little trip analyses, right? When I come home from a trip, I like to check out my training diary, go through my training diary and see what I was able to climb during that trip. Was I more efficient? Was I better than the last trip that I did, for example, right? Am I actually getting better? Because as you know, the more you get closer to your limit, the more you have to search for parameters where you actually got better, right? Because if you're just taking a look at rare, at pure raw max grade, it's often the case that you usually don't get better because it's really hard to climb your max grade on a trip when you're not in your um, familiar type of climbing and all that kind of stuff, right? So yeah, what I did was um, I took a look at my training diary and made a little bit of analysis and compared it to my last Leonidio trip, which happened 2017, three years ago. I mean, it's crazy how time flies by, actually. But I made some training diaries already back then. I pretty much had the same recording methods, which I have nowadays. So I was pretty able to compare the two trips with each other. And um, if you have been following the channel during the last couple of weeks and months, you might have realized that I talked a lot about climbing routes quickly, climbing routes efficiently, right? Not wasting more energy per route than you really need to to climb it. And since I, the, the reason why I put somewhat of a focus on that stuff during this trip is because of two reasons. First of all, the big thing hits the world, right? So I was sure that I wouldn't get simply as much, although I would spend more time in Greece than, in Greece than I would, spend, would have spent last time, 2017, I would not get as much climbing, at least percentage-wise, when it comes to that time as I did 2017, because 2017 everything was free, everything was uh, liberated, right? You could move around as you wish, which wasn't the case this trip. And additionally to that, I was traveling with my um, my pregnant girlfriend, right? She was already pregnant back then. And I didn't want to drag her to the crag like 24-7, you know, spending 10 goes per day in my project and stuff like that. I wanted to be able to climb the stuff that I, that I wanted to climb. And I wanted to climb it quickly, right? Without um, dragging her to the crag and all that kind of stuff more than necessary, so to say. So what I did, I have my little sheet of paper here. I wanted to share one method of analysis of analyzing a trip of analysis, I could say. One method of analyzing a climbing trip and to see whether your efficiency with attempts got better. Not necessarily your max grade. I mean, this kind of stuff is easy anyway, right? If you climbed a harder route this trip than you climbed in your last trip, then you improved in terms of your max grade. But the question also is how many more attempts did you have to spend on that hard route, right? How many other routes did you were you not able to climb because you all you had to invest all this kind of energy into one kind of route? And so this type of analysis that I came up with here respects that kind of thing. It respects how many attempts you spend and how much you got out of these attempts, really. So how much, this is really the efficiency we're talking about here, right? How much energy do you have to invest to get this much outcome from your climbing? And the way how I did it 
And first of all, I, I just simply counted all the single attempts, all the single goals, not even attempts, but goals, like also checking out the route is one goal, for example, right? Even if I'm sure I can't climb it, I have to check it out, for example, if I warm up or something like that, then this counts as a goal. So I counted all the goals from my 2017 trip and from this year's 2020 trip. The next thing that I did was I assigned points to each grade that's valuable for me. So also the thing is a proper go is a go that happens on a 7A route or harder for me personally, right? This is a very personal thing. It's very arbitrary, but you have to think about it like that. What are the the grades that are valuable to you, right? And then assign a value in terms of points to these grades. What I came up with was I got four points for a 7A, right? Five points for a 7A plus, and this increases until it comes to 8A with 10 points. 10 points is 188A. And the way how I came up with this um, rough estimate is that if I climb 188A, usually I need two goals for that. Why? Because usually I fail the onsite because I don't usually have a really good flash beta. So I fail the onsite. If I would have a good flash beta, I probably would flash it. But usually I don't have it. So I fail the onsite and then do it usually second go. Right. So this is how it usually goes with the eight A's and also quite sometimes quite often with the eight A pluses actually. So I'm thinking about it like that. I could also invest these two goals into just climbing two seven A's on site. Right. But the thing is, what is more valuable for me, an eight A second go or two seven A's on site? Now, for me, I have the feeling that an 8A second go is more valuable than two 7As on site. So I have to give the 8A more points than I would give to two 7As, right? Two 7As in my, uh, in my calculation here would be eight points. And this is lower than, than 10 points. So it makes kind of sense that way. If I would climb two 7A pluses on site, it would already be 10 points and therefore equally as uh, valuable as one 8A second go, right? Now, the thing is, still I have the feeling, to be honest, that one 8A second go would be more valuable to me than two 7A pluses on site. So I would have to fine tune my point system here even a little bit more, but then it's getting really sophisticated and I don't want to spend that much time. So. We're doing this as a rough estimate here, right? So now that we've assigned points to our grades, and I can also tell you how it goes beyond 8A, an 8A plus is already 14 points, an 8B is 22 points, an 8B plus is 36 points. And from then on, I even extrapolated it further because I didn't climb anything that was harder than 8B plus this or this trip or the trip 2017. But I thought in my mind, okay, if I would spin this um, further, how would I how would I grade? How would I assign points to even 8C? Right? I would give an 8C 60 points, an 8C plus 120 points, and a 9A theoretically I would give even 300 points. So this is how I really value um, routes beyond 8A, and the reason for that is quite obvious. Beyond 8A, it's getting uh, you know disproportionately harder for me. I've talked about why um, why grades are uh, grades and difficulty increase linearly, but the thing is, we get put into place by our genetics and starting age, uh, you know, on the grade ladder, and beyond that place, it's getting just disproportionately harder for us. So I have to assign disproportionately more points to routes that are harder than 8B plus and 8C and even beyond that. Because if I would do that kind of stuff, it would be just awesome, right? I mean, want to climb 19A, this is as much worth like um, doing, you know, four, uh, that's 10, it's almost, almost, almost a hundred seven A's on site, right? That would be 400 points. <laughs> and if I be honest, I would trade 400 seven A's on site <laughs> against 19A easily. <laughs> so probably I would have to give the 9A even more points, right? But anyway, that's how I came up with the point system. Now, the next thing I did is I simply counted how many routes I assented, I red pointed, regardless whether it's on site or flash, because it is already, this stuff is kind of, um, you know, calculated in. Because if you on site or flash a route, you only need one attempt for it, right? Only one go. And that's amazing. That gives you a really good go statistic like that, right? And then I simply. Uh, 
uh, put all the points together that I got with the roots, right? So I climbed, for example, 2020, I climbed like two 8Bs. So that's uh, 36 times 2 is 72 point, ah, 22 times 2, that's 44 points just for that, right? As you can see, I climbed a lot li less 8Bs than I did in the 2017 trip. In the 2017 trip, I climbed 8 8Bs. That's quite a lot more. So in terms of max grade, I could say I would have de decreased my ability in climbing for this trip, right? Now, the thing is, I spent a lot more goes doing these 8Bs than I spent, uh, relatively speaking, to the 2 8Bs and the 1 8B plus that I did this trip, right? So this is the thing that this kind of um, method here um, respects. And the way how you do that now is once you um, once you have all the, the grades written down and how many routes you did of each grade, you're just simply um, adding all the points together and then you calculate how many points you really got per go that you spent on average, right? And then you get one number. And the one number is 3.67 points per go for the trip for 2017 and four points per go for the trip for 2020, this trip. So in terms of how much points I got out per go that I spent, I actually improved, right? This and and this is something that I was that I wanted to do for this trip, right? I wanted to be efficient with my efforts. I don't want to spend like 10 goals for this one 8B or something. If I get 8B, okay. I want to do four, five, maybe six goals and I want to have it done, right? If I have an 8A, I wanted to do goals and then have it done. And of course that didn't work out all the time and this somehow this somehow then uh, is reflected in the statistics. Um, but this is kind of a good value, I feel, to, to find out how efficient you are with your efforts. And the funny thing is when we look at this four points per go on average, that pretty much means that I just could have on-sighted all the time just seven A's, right? Never failing a 7A onside, just, and I mean, 7A onside is pretty safe for me. Uh, it's like, I, I think I can onside about 96% of all 7As or something out there. That's my rough estimate, right? So I could have just gone out and just onsighted 7As constantly, and I would have gotten the same points per go on average than I did now, <laughs> but I did also climb and try much harder stuff than 7A, right? And back in 2017, if I would have done the same strategy, just on sighting 7As all the time, I would actually have gotten a better end score than I did back then. So this is how you can really see that my um, that the efficiency improved. I didn't really improve in terms of max grade. Uh, I didn't really improve in terms of the the sheer volume of, of um, climbs that I did, although I climbed a lot more stuff, I I have the feeling during this trip, but I also had a little bit more goals to spend, right? Actually, in terms of goals, I spent roughly the same. It was also due to the, to the big thing because we couldn't climb for some time and stuff like that, right? But anyway, I found this kind of analysis quite interesting, you know, just uh, finding out how efficient you are with your efforts. Um, and I thought I'd share it because maybe you want to do the same for your uh, next climbing trip. Uh, yeah, uh, now we're back in town. Um, the plan is to get back into some bouldering really soon to get back some max strength because I can tell you I am really a... I got some... I got a lot of endurance stimulus in in the last couple of weeks and months because that's just how grease climbing is, right? You climb a lot on, on too fast, you do a lot of shaking, a lot of knee pads. I mean, not for me because I'm a, uh, a pretty, you know, stubborn knee pad rejector. But even I had to use some knee pads from time to time during this trip. So, yeah, that was interesting. Now it's time to get back into some... Um, into some max strength and that's also why I'm gonna tune this guy here really soon uh, with some edges and holds to train on it's gonna be awesome and then we're gonna attack some really really hard stuff I would say outdoors because the autumn season is coming I hope I, I hope I have some some time uh, because another challenge is also waiting around the corner there um, that's gonna be interesting as well definitely and yeah, I keep you guys updated. I hope you enjoyed the little video. Let me know what you think about this method for analyzing your climbing trip down below. Would be really interesting. And drop a like if you 
uh, are down there already. That's always appreciated. I hope you're doing great, guys. Um, the autumn season is right around the corner. So, yeah, let's get strong. See you soon in the next one. Bye.